Um, so today we are going to be talking about whether or not King Edward IV of England was illegitimate. So before we get into whether he was illegitimate, we'll just talk about how Edward ended up becoming King of England. Edward was born on the 28th of April 1442 in Rouen, Normandy, France. He was the eldest son of Richard, Duke of York and Cecily Neville. When King Henry VI mental health failed, Richard made a claim for the throne which kicked off the War of the Roses between the House of York and the House of Lancaster. It was called the War of the Roses because of the different coloured roses that were the emblems for the family, white for York and red for Lancaster. Both of these houses were branches of the House of Plantagenet. When Richard of York was killed in 1460, Edward took over the claim to the throne and in 1461 beat the Lancastrians becoming king. But in 1469, the war between the two families started up again when the Earl of Warwick, who had helped put Edward on the throne, switched sides and put Henry VI back on the throne in 1470. Edward fled to exile in France, but in 1471 returned and beat the Lancastrians at the Battle of Tewkesbury. Edward became king again and ruled unimposed for 12 more years until his death on the 9th of April 1483. Edward's eldest son, also called Edward, inherited the throne becoming Edward V. His uncle Richard became regent but Richard disposed of Edward V and became king himself, becoming King Richard III. He done this by claiming that Edward V and his siblings were actually illegitimate due to the fact that their father had married in secret a woman called Eleanor Butler before he had married his wife and their mother Elizabeth Woodville, therefore making his marriage to Elizabeth bigamous. Now this could seem plausible because Edward actually married Elizabeth in secret after she said she would not have sex with him unless they were married. So could he have actually done the same with Eleanor, but conveniently Eleanor was dead by now, so she couldn't confirm whether this was true or not. But what if it was not actually Edward V that was illegitimate, but Edward IV? The story goes that Edward's father was not actually Richard Duke of York, but a French archer called Leybourne. At the time of Edward's birth, the family was in Rouen, Normandy, France. Richard had left his wife there to go and oversee the siege of Pantois, which was over 100 miles away from Rouen, for five weeks. Being bored and lonely, Cecily had started an affair with Blaybourne, which resulted in a pregnancy. But could there be any truth to this story? If you count back the days from Edward's birth to the day that he would have been conceived, this would have been in the five weeks that Richard was not there. And Edward's baptism was quite low-key for a royal considering that his brother Edmund, who was born a year after him's baptism, was some great magnificent affair. Could he have had a low-key baptism because he was illegitimate? It can also be considered that Edward did not look anything like his father. Edward was tall and fair and rather strapping while his father Richard was short and dark. Now members of Edward's family have also commented on his parentage. Most shocking of these is actually Cecily herself. When Edward announced his secret marriage to Elizabeth Woodville, Cecily was so angry that she revealed that Edward was actually illegitimate. And Edward's younger brothers, George, Duke of Clarence and Richard, Duke of Gloucester, have also both said at different points in their lives that their older brother was illegitimate. And Edward's cousin, the Earl of Warwick, who had helped put Edward on the throne, did actually comment on his cousin being illegitimate when they fell out in 1469. Okay, so now we have the arguments for Edward being illegitimate. Let's debunk them all. Okay, first of all, there is not 100 miles between Rouen and Pantos. According to Google Maps, the distance is only 57 miles. So it could have been completely plausible for either Richard to travel back quickly and see Cecily or Cecily to actually go and see her husband. They were actually a really close couple, so it would have not been unusual if they did go and visit each other. 
Also, it would have been impossible for Cecily and Blaybourne to actually be able to spend enough time alone together to result in a pregnancy. Cecily would have constantly been surrounded by staff and guards, so any privacy would have been non-existent. Cecily was also a very proud woman, so it would have been unlikely for her to go with someone who was so low born. Edward's baptism. So if Edward was Richard's son, then it is entirely possible that Edward was born prematurely. This could happen if his conception date was when Richard returned from the siege. His quiet baptism could have been because Edward was quite sickly because he was born prematurely and they were unsure whether he would survive. Unbaptized children are unable to enter heaven so by doing a quick baptism it would have ensured that Edward would have been able to enter heaven if he did die. And also while we're on the subject of conception dates, if Richard and Cecily conceived Edward just before he left for the siege then Edward could have actually been born late and he could have been born around the 41 or 42 week mark. Edward's appearance. You don't always look like your parents. Sometimes you might take after your grandparents. Sometimes that might be an uncle or an auntie. Edward's brother George and his sister Margaret also did not look like their parents. And there are actually plenty of relatives on either side of the families that they could have taken after. Now, Cecily's accusation that Edward was illegitimate. Why would she say this? Cecily was apparently so angry that Edward had married a commoner that she told everyone that he was illegitimate and should not be king. But why would she expose herself to scandal and ridicule? You would have thought that she might have had some understanding towards the king, seeing she had basically gone and done the exact same thing herself. Though Cecily was slightly worse because she had an affair, whereas Edward had married his commoner. The fact is though, we don't hear about Cecily's accusation until 1483, when Edward's brother Richard was trying to usurp the throne from his nephew. Could this have all been made up to help Richard with his case? Though it is a bit mean for Richard to do this to his mother, seeing as she was still alive at the time. But would Edward's father, Richard, really have taken on a child that he knew was not his? Would he have really passed on his inheritance to Edward if Edward had been illegitimate? I personally feel that Edward was not illegitimate and that his quiet baptism was just because he was born prematurely. I feel that these are all just rumours made up to discredit Edward so that Richard could justify taking the throne. But what do you think? Could the rumours be true or are they just all made up? Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.